Y'all, people are coming out from the woodworks to put Erin Patterson on blast with some of her odd past behavior, and we're gonna talk about it in today's video. <laughs> Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. The sofa's back there pretending to be a sofa, and I'm here pretending to be Paul. Now, you'll notice that there is nothing on that blanket. That's because Roscoe is over here. He's our official mascot. But guess what? I'm babysitting. Coco's come to visit. Now for today's video, like I said, we're going to be talking about some updates with Aaron Patterson. Now for those who have not been following this case, Aaron Patterson is the lady in Australia who put on, I guess we're just going to have to be safe and call it the luncheon from hell at this point, okay? She served some mushrooms in a beef Wellington dish. These mushrooms ended up being death caps here incredibly deadly, okay? Anyways, she was serving this to her in-law, her former in-laws, red flag number one. Three of them are dead. One of them is fighting for life at this point. And yeah, so <laughs> there's that. So Aaron is now at the center of a huge controversy over there that has taken literally the world by storm of like, what did this woman do? So of course, when situations like this happen, people from their past come up, they speak out, this type thing. Now, of course, at the time of this recording, Aaron has not been formally charged, which is shocking to me, but, you know, I don't know how it works over there down under, okay? So at this time, like I said, she has not been charged, so this is all allegedly, right? We do not know if she intentionally tried to take out the former in-laws with these death cat mushrooms. However, it is highly sus, okay? So specifically what we're going to be doing today is we're reviewing a Daily Mail article, and this is just some people from the past that have come out, and they're actually reporting on what seems to be some someone in a true crime form that was like, you know, oh, I knew her or whatever. So this is very, very much, you know, a word of mouth, gossipy kind of a thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, we usually just do what we know is a fact and we just don't know. Okay. This he said, she said tap thing. Okay. But nonetheless, I did find it interesting because also when you start to look at the different circumstances with different people involved in these cases, you know, for example, her uh, estranged husband who has made the comments of like, oh, that's how you kill my parents and things like this. So doesn't look good. So the stuff that this person is talking about, I mean, to me, I'm like, it seems a little bit on brand, right? So that's why I wanted to come to y'all and talk about it. Now, before we do get all up in it, if you will, please open the doors, fluff up the cushions. Y'all make room for our sponsor today. Hello Fresh. Y'all, it is basically fall and we are giving a kickstart to my favorite season with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh handles all the meal planning and shopping. They deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. And look, when it comes to options, more is more. HelloFresh has over 40 recipes and over 100 add-on items to choose from every week. And look, with their quick and easy recipes and 15-minute meals, you can get a tasty dinner on the table in the less time that it takes to get takeout or delivery. I love it. And look, they also take the stress out of meal time by delivering the fresh ingredients and and easy recipes right to your door. Literally, I am saving so much time at the grocery store and in turn in my wallet. And here's the thing, a new season, especially fall, calls for new meals. They have a fall lineup of delicious dinners and more to choose from. You can pick from 40 weekly recipes that suit your lifestyle, from veggie to family friendly to fit and wholesome. Y'all, they also got breakfast, quick lunches, tasty snacks, you name it. Just shop HelloFresh Market and add any of those tasty time-saving solutions to your weekly box. So if you follow me, you know I've been using HelloFresh for a while now. And this go around, I had parents in town visiting and we had a fun time cooking this together and eating it together. And that's one thing that I have absolutely loved about HelloFresh is the times that I've hosted people over and we're cooking a meal. First of all, it makes me feel fancy. I'm not gonna lie. But it's also just that sense of community, that sense of friendship that you can have while doing something fun and creating these beautiful, wonderful, tasty meals. So look, go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50 reporting live from my sofa at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Go to hellofresh.com and use code 50 reporting live from my sofa at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping and get to enjoying your fall. 
All right, so be sure to check out HelloFresh. All their stuff's down below. Let's go ahead and start reviewing this article. Now I'm gonna put up a little screenshot here of the article. Now I'm gonna be reading it from my computer. So if I'm looking away, it's why, that's why I'm doing it. I'm not trying to be rude or nothing, okay? But I'll go through it and read it. We can talk about it and use it as a talking point for commentary. So the first thing we see up here, it says Mushroom Chef's Facebook messages leak. Erin Patterson rips into her husband, Simon, and shares a scathing verdict about locals and her small town of Kurumbura, I hope I'm saying that right, as details emerge about her career for the first time. Now, it does do some bullet points beneath this. Four people were poisoned during lunch. She's a person of interest. A friend has spilled the beans on her. So let's move over here. Now, secondly, just, you know, right off the rip with this right here, look how much younger Aaron looks in this photograph right here. Now, the top here says, Aaron branded contributors to Kurumbura newsletter, the Bureau Flyer, illiterate, MFers during a rant to an old friend. <laughs> I don't know why that just strikes me as funny, right? A person claiming to be a former friend of the 46-year-old spilled the beans on the Langatha stay-at-home mom on a true crime online forum. Now, as you can see here at the bottom, it does do this little capture of what she allegedly has said. And it says, I'm very good at details. That's why I'm good at proofreading, etc. I've been editing the community magazine for two years now, and I have to bring together articles written by illiterate MFers and turn them into something legible. Well. Interesting about the details and that kind of a thing, right? Because it's just like, okay, what kind of details are we good at? Are we good at the details of attempting to take out our former in-laws, but we messed up on it, and now everyone's finding out? Time shall tell, Miss Erin. Let's go to the next page. In the next screenshot, it says, Aaron and her, th and her then husband, Simon, had put together the 48-page booklet of advertorials and promotions of the regional Victorian community for years after they're taking it over from Simon's parents. And messages show she did not think highly of some of the con contributors. Now, in her defense, okay, I will say this. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, just imagine being an editor, right? I mean, when I was in school studying writing and stuff like that, I mean, please. My stuff, oh my God, I feel sorry for any editor that had to work with it. I mean, it, it's, it is what it is, right? So this could literally just be behind the scenes like work talk. Given the context of the lens that we look at Aaron through, obviously it's not a cute look. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, again, this could just be shop talk is what I'm getting at. You know, out with girls, out with boys, you know, throwing a few back, shop, talking shop, you know, that kind of a thing. Let's go on with the next page. Now, also, she'll, you know, come for her former husband at this point, Simon. And I thought this was interesting. This is one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about here. So you'll see on here another one of these, you know, alleged messages from her. And it says, I've had a cleaner come once a fortnight. Now, we looked that up last video I did on this. We learned that a fortnight is two weeks, okay? 14 days, half a month, pay period, whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's keep going. But she's been having a cleaner come for the last, uh, every two weeks for the last 18 months. My husband has no idea we have a cleaner come. I love it. Now, I don't resent the fact that he never helps me with anything because I'm not doing the big jobs either. She washes bathrooms and dunnies. We might have to look dunny up. We'll do that in a second. Mops and vacuums and changes the bed linen and it transforms the house. Now, all I have to resent him over are the nightly dishes. Okay, whoa, Miss Aaron, you came in hot on this one. I mean, let's just simmer down over there, young lady. I mean, my... My goodness, now that is so telling though. Now here's the thing, we're gonna look at both sides. If you're sitting here and you're with a partner, spouse, whoever, and you're doing all the stuff, I don't care, man, woman, female, whatever. If they're, if you're in the zone and they're not doing any of this stuff for whatever reason, yes, you're gonna, it's gonna probably upset you if that was not the deal that you had prearranged or whatever. Okay, a couple of things that stick out here with me, but before, we get to that, y'all. I'm sorry, but we need to do some serious investigation real quick. What is a dunny? Okay, that right, yeah, dunny. A dunny is a small brownie-like being in the folklore. Well, I don't know what all that is. Oh, wait, why do Australians call it? It dates from the, the dung plus Ken. Name for the outhouse. Y'all help me out if you're from there. Is this, is, is she talking about they're cleaning the outhouse? I mean, I don't want to sit here and suck up the whole video with a Google search, but my God. I mean, it's either some kind of like little elf or it's an outhouse. 
or an elf that lives in our house. I don't know. Drop it in the comments. But let's get back to my thoughts on this. The fact that she is so proud of herself for being like, oh, I've got one over on him. I have a cleaner coming and he thinks I do it all. Now, the only thing I have to resent him is the dishes. To me, if you look at it through the lens of this, and again, this is alleged, but like if she was really going to try and take them all out, because remember, she invited him to this luncheon from hell and he backed out the last minute, right? Thank God. And so she's having a luncheon for her former in-laws and, you know, a separated husband at this point, who they all end up dying almost. <sighs> yeah. That's someone who's like, look at what I can get away with, that type thing. Well, she clearly gets off on thinking that she got away with this old cleaner thing. Yeah, you know, now I only have to do is resent him for this. So we have resentment. You know, th was this enough to take out the family is a question. So to me, this is very telling. Okay, now let's read the little thing that the reporter wrote underneath. So it says, an anonymous person claiming to be a friend of Aaron hit the forum last weekend in a thread that received more than 200 posts before it was closed by administrators. The poster claimed Aaron had previously worked as an accountant and with the Department of Defense. Defense. She's meticulous and very smart, the person said. Her whole family are extremely smart people. The former friend posted several messages they had saved from the true crime group before Aaron deactivated her account in August. Very interesting. Now, you would think if Miss Aaron is all up in true crime, girl, do your homework better, okay? I mean, because the math ain't mathing with this one. Okay, let's go on to the third page. Now it says the so-called ex-friend claimed to have met Aaron online through the true crime group. She shared two photos of Aaron after the birth of one of her children. I think she was also into a lot of crime fiction like Agatha Christie, the person claimed. I mean, how could you not be? Lord rest her soul, Agatha. Okay, now Daily Mail Australia is not suggesting that Miss Patterson had sinister motives or was inspired by true crime. And again, we don't know this. And they put, make sure to put this in everything because again, y'all, this could literally have been an accident. We don't know, but it does seem really weird, right? Only the investigation will lead us to, to be able to tell. So let's keep going and we'll talk about that in a second. So it says, indeed, it is one of the most popular categories of podcasts in Australia. I think it, that's true everywhere. They're talking about true crime. Erin was also passionate about Lego, it was claimed. She was also an obsessive reader. She had tons of books. She was very smart and very well read. Members of the private group were told. The person claimed she had only ever engaged with Erin online with a planned dinner and never going ahead. Well, I mean, hallelujah, sister. I mean, you're lucky to be here probably, right? Now that's, we don't know if Aaron would have served those mushrooms at another meal. Probably not, but you never know, right? I mean, we just have to question some of these things. So it says, we had a very tight group. It was more intimate than normal due to our shared fascination with crime, the person wrote. We thought we knew her deeply, but we are now discovering that a lot of her life was very secretive. Aaron didn't have any other friends than this close circle groups. You have to imagine the most extreme introvert you have ever met. This is Aaron, reclusive, only online friends. Now that I don't consider to be like overly healthy, depending on the type of personality that you are. Now, like, let's say that you're somebody who that just works with you. But again, the resentment that this only has online friends, you know, there's also, it seems to be like a lot of control issues going on here, right? Now, again, I'm not a therapist or anything like that. So I'm not credentialed to say that. It's just kind of my little sofa opinion. But, you know, it just seems, you know, odd. Let's go to the next one. So to continue on, it says, the former friend claimed Aaron had told them her estranged husband had once fallen ill from close to dirium difficile infection, a germ usually spread from one's hands. Simon himself spent 21 days in intensive care after collapsing from the mystery stomach illness at his home in May 2022. Throughout his stay in hospital, Aaron kept his worried friends updated about his condition on social media. The friend disputed previous reports Aaron had been keen to get back together with her deeply religious husband, claiming she had initiated the split. She's an atheist as far as I know. She was very unhappy in her marriage and felt like a single parent. At the time, I thought it was normal. My husband isn't pulling his weight type commentary, the friend stated. We didn't hear much about Simon other than that he was never at home, never helping her. She was very closed about this. She left him. She didn't want to get back with him. The friend answered numerous questions from members, including her thoughts on Aaron's cooking. She shared a few cooking photos with us in the group, pad thai, etc. Honestly, not being mean, but it never looked super appetizing. If I was to guess, I would say she was a mediocre cook, the person claimed. Now, here's the thing. So, hearing somebody talk this way of, like, she didn't want to get back with the husband. You know, she didn't want to do this or that. That makes me sit here and think, well, maybe this was some fluke accident. Because if you were, like, hands clean, be, I'm so happy to be done with this person, why would you want to do something that would potentially tie you to them the rest of your life? Now, again, we don't know. This could all be false. You know how sometimes you meet these characters or that we see them here in the true crime world that we watch, where it's like everyone has a different version of them. So, these are just online friends. Might not even know Aaron or true motivations or personality 
type, right? So, I mean, there's no real telling here. So here's my thing, you know, overall with a situation like this is, you know what, at the end of the day, the investigation will show us. Do I think that there's completely suspicious behavior in Aaron Park? Yes. Starting with three people dropping dead after eating your lunch and you not getting sick and your kids who you fed the leftovers to not getting sick either. Let's start there, okay? That your ex-husband or your estranged husband was going to be at the dinner, but he backed out last minute. Then he made comments about, so that's how you kill my parents. I could go on, okay? Fact of the matter is, she has not been charged, so we don't know what came of it. If this turns out that it was a true, complete accident, well then, so be it. Now, here's the thing. In this, uh, uh, you know, stuff like this, and this kind of stuff's going to keep coming out and whatnot, especially if this goes to trial, you know, learning these little nooks and crooks, and again, we don't know if this is true or not. Everything's hearsay. For me, learning about the nuances of a person, of a suspect, of a person of interest is always interesting because, like I said, what really stuck out to me in this was this whole dynamic of wanting to get something over on her husband, you know, having the, being very open about the resentment because it almost makes you look, look at it also on the other side of, well, she was big into getting one over on him. How big would that be, be to be like, I'm serving your whole family this horrible mushrooms? You know, allegedly she didn't want to get back with this dude. He didn't pull his weight. He didn't do this. Well, then why would you want to potentially do something, like I said, that would either tie you to him or put you in a position to have to take care of or something like that? So somewhere in the middle is the truth. Now, she could be all those things, but also really have wanted to get back together with him and tie everything back in. You know, we just, we don't know. I am praying at number one, at the time of this video, I believe his name is Ian the Survivor, who is hanging on for dear life. I have not heard any updates, so I'm assuming he's on the somewhat mend. I mean, hopefully he will make it, right? Because the other three victims weren't so lucky. Remember, these were older people, and so their systems aren't going to be as good and able to bounce back and that type thing. It's very tragic. I want to continue to hear more from, like, what's the husband have to say? Because if you go by what he had to say, it's like, is she guilty? Okay? That's the vibe that it gives. Like, you know, him making those comments like that's you kill my parents and that type thing which of course we don't know if she really meant to do that now another thing that i found interesting is how people are like she's very smart very detail oriented now that would also lend one to think like okay well if that's the case then why would she have such a flimsy excuse as to how number one she got these mushrooms allegedly and how they ended up in the dish it doesn't make sense it's not something that you would expect a detail oriented person to concoct so there's that. All that being said, let me know what you think down in the comment section. You know, do you think these little glimpses and, you know, into if this is all her and it's all legit, into her private interactions and this type of thing, is this telling or is this like a people are following her to the grocery store and reporting on it because it's, you know, it, it sells papers and headlines? I want to know. Now, y'all, if you're still watching, y'all, we got a lot. I got the other one here, too. We've got a little bit. We've got a cocoa. And we've got a Roscoe over here. He doesn't, he don't like sharing his father, so he's very upset right now. But these two have now been quiet for us to do our little video. And they've also been snuggle muggling. So they all three at, y'all, I'm talking major. We got three of them. We need serious overs in the comment section, okay? And until we all meet down in the comment section to talk shop talk and doggy talk down in the comment section about the comment section, we'll see y'all there.